Hey guys, welcome to the quarantine version of the 45 Drives Weekly Tech Tip, where guys have two forms of haircuts, shaved head like Brett's or this. So today we're gonna to be talking about VDO or Virtual Data Optimizer. So what is this magical tool that promises compression, deduplication, and thin provisioning all from one neat little package? Let's find out together. So as I said in the intro, VDO provides compression, deduplication, and thin provisioning all from one package. So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna dive into that, but first let's just talk about some of the things that have existed in the past for compression. So you may have heard of things like RAR or GZIP. So essentially the problem or the fault with those things is you can't actively work on your data while it's compressed. So you have to work on your data, compress it, save that data, but then if you want to actually go and edit again, it has to be decompressed and then worked on again. So you can see where it's not really ideal for all use cases. So in comes VDO. So back in 2017, Red Hat bought a company called Permavit Technologies. They're the original developers of VDO. And so since then, Red Hat actually took the technology, open sourced it, and put it in their standard repo. So you can actually install it very simply with a yum install VDO from a CentOS command line. Or if you want, you can actually go and grab the source RPMs yourself from GitHub. And in next week's video, I'm actually going to show a pretty in-depth tutorial on how to work with VDO and some really cool things you can do with it. And I'm going to do a live test showing the difference between a regular non-VDO backed block device and an actual VDO block device and see just how much data you can save in the right conditions. So first let's define deduplication and compression so there's no confusion. So both are used as space saving technologies, but essentially you can think of deduplication as uh, many data centers or even file servers in an office will have many copies of the same file. And what deduplication allows you to do is remove any redundant copies of that file and have just the one where, so it'll allow you to save a whole lot of space in that instance. Whereas compression, what it does, it'll take a file itself and any redundant or uh, unnecessary parts of that file, it will remove and shrink it down. So it can do that in a few different ways. Uh, one would be just to remove any white space or blank space in the file, or another would be to replace long strings of characters with shortened or abbreviated uh, ones that essentially point to or mark that location in the file. So all you really need to get started with VDO is a block device and then deciding how much logical space you want to give it with your VDO tools. Uh, so again, I'm going to be showing a really in-depth tutorial on how to use this uh, in the next video, so definitely you don't want to miss that. So video volumes can be used underneath local file systems, iSCSI LUNs, or even Ceph. You just want to be careful where the video volume lives. So it's even possible to use it with LVM, but you're just going to most likely want to use video volume to create the physical volume itself. So the image here on screen should really help explain this. So also, if you're using encryption with your file system, you're never going to want to put a video volume below the encryption layer, as video would no longer be able to perform its duties. So one example of a great video use case that I've been actually personally using a lot lately is virtual machines. So I have a single server here running over at Hypervisor where I have a fully virtualized Ceph cluster built. Now in this virtual Ceph cluster, I've broken out each and every service to their own VM. That means I have about 20 or more virtual machines running the same CentOS 7 operating system. Now without any form of dedupe, you just have 20 different versions of the same operating system built under your, on your underlying disk structure. Now this is pretty inefficient, uh, as you can imagine, but for the most part, it's standard practice. However, if we take a look at this VDO volume that I have for this underlying data storage for my virtual machines, we can then see that I've been able to save a whole lot of space. So another great use case for VDO is, let's say you're a researcher and you have a lot of research data that you're generating. And typically what will happen is when you're doing many of the same tests over and over with just very slightly different results from one to the next, you're going to have many copies of data with a lot of the same data from run to run. So if you have a situation where you have to back up to the cloud for let's say disaster recovery or just to have a second copy, um, it'd be pretty inefficient to take all that data and copy every bit of it up to the cloud. It's gonna be expensive as well because uh, cloud storage is quite expensive. Um, so what you could do is you could take that research data and then move it over to your VDO volume where you can then compress as well as dedupe all of that data and then at which point you can then push it up to the cloud. You'd save a whole lot of bandwidth, a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money with your cloud service provider. So it should be noted, however, that there's nothing free in this world and everything has its pros and cons. So if VDO worked the same way that I just explained that it did without any downside, well, everyone would be using it all the time for everything. 
So it should be known that there is gonna be some trade-offs if you wanna put this in place. So the first one that you should be aware of is performance. So you are definitely gonna incur a read-write performance penalty uh, depending on your workload, server specs, and drive type, of course. But the best way to find out just how much of a penalty you're gonna have is go and try it yourself. Again, I'm gonna plug that video next week. If you follow along and you check it out next week, I'll show you just how to set it up yourself. So VDO can also be CPU and RAM intensive. Again, it's gonna vary depending on server to server, how much performance you have to spare, and how many other duties your server's pulling at any given time. So finally, it should be noted, to get the most out of deduplication and compression with VDO, it really does require you to have a really strong working knowledge of your own data sets and just how much is deduplicable or compressible. All right, so that was this week's tech tip. Hopefully you learned something really cool and new about VDO and deduplication and compression. Be sure to check back next week because I'm going to be doing that tutorial as well as a really cool experiment just showing how much you can actually save with VDO in the right circumstances.